Uh, I would say I'm very comfortable. You know, we had a big off season just working with the quarterbacks, uh, all the running backs, really just trying to put ourselves in position to, you know, just get comfortable with that game. So at the end of the day, we want to um, be a force in multiple different aspects of the game. So, you know, I'm super comfortable with the aspect and I'm super excited that, you know, we can open the offense in multiple dimensions. Kendall, you battle injuries a lot in your mm -hmm. career. How just gratifying you to feel the final end zone twice in this uh, it was really great, you know, but at the same time, during the whole process, my teammates stayed in my ear. They just let me know that uh, they were just going to stay with me. You know, I was doing all the rehab and in the training room and everything that I needed to do so I could get back on the field as soon as possible. And I just had my teammates just, you know, had my back the whole time. So they made the process really easy to come back on the field. How, how much have they supported you over the past couple of years? And how much has it meant to you to have them right there by your side even when you're not necessarily home? Yeah, it's meant the world to me, especially in the past, you know, with the knee injuries. Uh, it, during those times of being out, you know, it was, it was kind of hard, but they just always let me know, just keep your head up. You know, your time's going to come, and, you know, that's what I did. I just, you know, kept my head down, just kept working, kept doing what I needed to do to get back on the field, and I'm just happy that I could be in big moments with my teammates. How much, uh, it was the hamstrings, you just never can tell, especially mm -hmm. in a skill position like you. Uh, how concerned were you as you got closer to the game about mm -hmm. being able to get back? I'm yeah. Crazy. Make it mm. How much of an unknown was that for a while? To be honest, I wasn't really concerned because, uh, you know, me and Ron, we talked a whole lot about it. You know, I'm one of those players that I stayed in the training room all day, basically, and just kept doing what I needed to do to get it back. And, you know, we just had the plan, and it was really my job to do what I needed to do to get back on the field. So, you know, I just did what I had to. And Ron, the training room, you know, the whole uh, – the whole workout training room, everybody, they just put me in a position to get back. And I'm just thankful for them that they really uh, put a lot of attention, a lot of effort to help me get back on the field. Were you 100% would you mm -hmm. say by the time you yes, sir. Saturday? Yes, sir. When you're battling injuries and going through that rehab, like, is there anything that you're able – is there anything that you were able to work on even if you weren't able to go with full tilt? Yeah, definitely. I was still able to do most of the uh, like the leg uh, workouts and the upper body workouts, and even to do some running on the side, just trying to stay in shape, keep my body right. And you know, because at the end of the day, I still wanted to be uh, ready and in shape by the time the season got there. I didn't want to have to, you know, play catch up. So you know, like I said, Coach Sinclair and everybody in the weight room and the training room, they just helped me, you know, with the conditioning, keeping my body ready, everything like that, to you know, stay ready for the field. Oh, I let him know that, you know, at this point, he just has to trust the uh, the training room. You know, Ron and them, they've dealt with multiple injuries like that. So they definitely know what it takes to get back on the field. And, you know, I can understand, I can relate to being out and, you know, not being able to play. So I just let him know, just keep doing what you have to do. Just, you know, keep God with you and everything will work out. Just keep your head down and uh, everything's going to play itself out. Kendall, you were close to a couple scores in the first half. I know that you, know, you mm -hmm. have only had one touchdown before this year. How good did it feel to get not one but two in, in the second? It felt great, to be honest, but at the end of the day, uh, if you look back on the plays, it was really, you know, key blocks made, especially on the pass, uh, Reed Gilbert and uh, Marcus Roseme, you know, plays like that, they kind of set it up and opened up the holes that allowed me to be able to get in the end zone. So, you know, after the end zone, I made sure I got right back to my teammates and, you know, slapped them on the helmet, thanked them, because, you know, at the end of the day, especially as a running back, we really can't do anything unless, you know, everything else, you know, works itself out. In the course of this year, it's a little bit different running back room with the guys who uh, left. Just kind of talk about what the vibe is like with, with you guys. And, mm -hmm. and just, I mean, everybody talked about George being mm -hmm. RDU. I mean, just, it's y'all yes, turn now. Yeah. Something, that aspect of something you talk about a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. No. In the running back room, we're definitely a family, you know, especially uh, me, Kenny, and Dejan. We played a lot of football together, and especially with Branson and Andrew Paul coming in, we welcomed them with open, with open arms, and they just became part of the family. You know, we have, you know, little group chats, and we communicate with each other, and, you know, the vibe is just, like, like I said, it's like a brotherhood, and that's what I would describe our running back room as. Everybody, you know, if we need something, we go to each other, and there's never nothing that we can't talk to each other about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely excited to, you know, take on a bigger role on this team and but at the same time, you know, even coming up as a freshman, as a sophomore, I knew that it was all about trusting the process because, you know, at a school like this, we're always going to have uh 
five-star, four-star running backs coming in back to back to back. So at a certain point, you just kind of got to wait your turn. And at the end of the day, everybody's going to get their turn. It's just you got to, you know, be humble enough and, you know, look at yourself and realize that you still have aspects in your game that you have to fully develop before you can take on a bigger role. You touchdown catch in the spring game, touchdown catch in your first game. How much in the past year have you really spent working on your abilities as a pass catcher? How much do you think you've improved in that area? I've definitely uh, made that a key focus, uh, talking with Coach McGee. Uh, I let him know that that was one aspect that I wanted to work on because coming in at high school, I felt like, you know, high school, I didn't really catch the ball. It was mostly, you know, just running the ball. So coming in, I let him know that I want to, by the time that it's my time to, you know, move on, I want to be the complete back in all areas. And uh, he's worked with me, you know, countless times during the offseason, just trying to put me in those deep ball situations or those coming out the backfield situations. And uh, I'm just thankful that, you know, I have a coach that, you know, is willing to put effort for me to be able to help my, uh, make my dreams happen. What's this, week, what's this week been like knowing that you guys had a, a pretty complete game uh, last week and you have a different type of opponent this week? And, you know, what's the mm -hmm. atmosphere been like in the practice here? Uh, it's definitely been the same type of vibe, like we're, you know, playing Oregon or playing any other team. It's the same approach. Uh, one thing that we've kind of uh, been focusing on is uh, at the end of the day, we have to uphold our standard as Georgia. We can't, you know, look any other way. Uh, we have to we have to make it our job to keep the standard alive and keep those physical Tuesday, Wednesday practices. Because at the end of the day, those practices are what build Georgia football. Those, you know, we call it bloody Tuesdays. And, you know, we come out there and it's just, bloodbath, team run, and periods like that. Those are periods that, you know, build Georgia football. So at the, we're still uh, attacking this week, and, you know, every day we're practicing hard because, you know, we want to be the best team, and I believe that we have uh, everything we need, you know, the players, the coaches, and, you know, we trust the coaches to, you know, make that happen. So we're just taking this, you know, hungry as ever. After the game, Kirby talked about this being an offense that people are at home, they're watching, and they want to play in it. As somebody that's actually out there on the field, you know, what is it that makes this offense attractive to guys' mm. perspective? I would say, yeah, I would say Coach Munkin, he has the ability to, you know, it's not just an offense where it's just passing or it's just running. He has the ability to put the ball in multiple uh, different players' hands and, you know, let players just show what they can do. And I feel like just coming off of that Oregon game, I feel like a lot of players – uh, they all got to touch the ball, and everybody really made plays. And that was that's really the most exciting thing about football, you know, when you and all your brothers, the ones that you, you know, grind out with doing those stadium runs or those team runs, the conditioning, you know, when everybody's really eating. And that's what makes it more fun because at the end of the day, you know, you want to see everybody eat. So this offense is just, I would say, you know, talking to a recruit or something like that, this is an offense where everybody can showcase their talents. We saw Kenny making plays in the mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. How much of that what you did on Saturday is what you've been seeing pretty much through the offseason? Oh, that's, you know, seeing Kenny do that is, you know, it's really kind of nothing new. You know, even since I got to Georgia all the time in practice, he was making those plays. He has that, that stick ability to put his foot in the ground and just make a defender miss. And he also, you know, he's one of the best uh, receiving running backs that I've seen. So just, you know, seeing him in the game, I was really happy for him because, you know, like I said, in this, in this system, you just have to wait your turn. And I was just happy to see, you know, one of my brothers just be able to go out there and showcase for the world what we already knew. Like I said, you had to be, be patient mm -hmm. to, to finally be getting the opportunity. Well, there time, the first couple of years, I know you just kind of had mm -hmm. a little bit to do with it, but did you find your own patient kind of where then you kind of had to talk to somebody and say, hey, look, I yeah, I, I would I wouldn't really say it wore thin because, you know, I had uh, James Cook and Zamir White in front of me, and you know those are both great backs, and you know just watching them practice and just seeing how comfortable they were in the game time, you know, a lot of the comfort they had were things that I was nervous about, like when it came to pass blocking or catching out the backfield or just you know getting the reads throughout the defense and. I, you kind of have to look yourself in the mirror and like decide like okay are you really ready to be you know the the number one or you know ready to have that main role so I kind of just you know took my opportunities and tried to do the most that I could do with them but at the end of the day I still knew that I had things to work on to be able to become the back that I wanted to be. How much better do you feel you read defense now when you're mm -hmm. up in the backfield? Does it, does yeah. it come back now? You still kind of you know mm -hmm. depending on somebody else to kind of help guide you. You know what's going to happen. No, I feel very confident now. You know, you know. The, Everybody, once we get the offense set and everything, kind of it's just kind of you know working with Coach McGee and 
you know, on the running back room, he always kind of emphasizes being able to do that even before, you know, the points made or anything like that. If you can know the play before, you know, it really even happens, and that's when you can really elevate your game. So I would say I'm very confident because now I can just, you know, kind of relax instead of having to worry about everything, you know, my job or anything. I can kind of just relax and just play my game. Your rushing touchdown on Saturday, sort of walk me through what you saw in that play. Yeah, pretty neat to come back there. Cool. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, we got the ball and. One thing that uh, in the running back room we emphasize is you got to be able to make first level uh, first level reads. So, you know, um, just got the ball and saw you know the cut to be made. And once I made the cut, you, I just saw green grass, and you know that's definitely a great feeling because you know once you get that open space, all you got to do is just go take it. So, you know, the line they did what they had to. They opened up the hole, and it was just my job to you know finish it. And I'm just you know, thankful for the line that we have because those guys are the same guys that every day they're out there battling against some of the best D-line in the country every day, just working and working and working, and we just make each other better. What have you seen from Dejan so far this fall? Dejan, he's, I would say he's somebody that, you know, he's definitely one of those runners that he'll definitely catch you by surprise, you know what I mean? Like, he'll come in, he's, you know, he's one of those, he'll slide through the defense, he'll make those cuts, make somebody miss uh, the, the receiving game. He'll, I would say, our linebackers probably fear Dejon most because he has that just that quick little twitch to him. And, you know, Dejon's game, I just love seeing the way that it's elevated since we got here and just being able to see every, everybody's game elevate. But, you know, Dejon, I think Dejon's a really special player. And, you know, he's one of, I'm glad that he's in a running back room like we have to, you know, be a part of our family. Outside the numbers, is there any measure stick that you guys, especially the running back room, hold up to to make sure you're improving every week, like some mm-hmm. kind of film or anything that maybe a lot of people won't notice? I would say just holding the standard of Georgia running backs. Uh, a lot of Georgia running backs have, you know, were in the past and have really set the standard for, you know, Georgia football as a whole. So we just want to kind of follow in that lineage and just uphold the standard, just keep that title of RBU. You just mentioned Zeus and James Cook. Have they hit you up with any advice to start the season yet or not yet? I oh, know they already, you know, before the games, they, you know, put us, we're all in like a little group chat. They text us and it's like, it's game time, it's time to go. And, you know, we, that's when it's time to lock in. So, you know, I'm I'm thankful because you know I I became close with James Cook and Zamir White through the time here. We spent two years together, and they became almost they became like big brothers to me. You know, they in times when you know it was tough for me at Georgia, they were the ones that uh, helped me keep my head up and you know keep my head on straight. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that even as they're doing their thing, you know, continuing to chase their dream at the next level, they still reach back out to us and basically just kind of. Give us a few words before the game and let us know it's time to lock in. All right, thank you, Kendall. Appreciate y'all. Thank you.